have a strong spirit. So whatever comes our way this week and the weeks to come, we're able to overcome and make it and stand strong. I believe we can stand strong. I believe we can win this thing. I believe we can be more than conquerors because the Word says we are. I believe we can be overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. Do you believe that? Amen. Because if you're convinced otherwise, well, you're leaving a door open for defeat. But I believe with all my heart, if we got a strong spirit, though infirmity may come, weakness may come, sickness and disease might come, poverty times might show up, regardless of what happens, if we are strong in spirit, we shall overcome. Amen. Now, if you believe it, shout amen like you never shouted it. Amen. See, this is the thing. We are spirit, soul, and body. See, a lot of times we look at a person, we think of them, that just, that's just them in their body. But I, I look at your neighbor this morning, you know, and tell them, say, hey, this isn't really me. <laughs> Amen. Well, it is your body, but the real you is on the inside. And yeah, your body is going to die one of these days, but your spirit's going to live forever and ever and ever with the Lord. Isn't that good news? Amen. In fact, your body can grow weak, but have you ever noticed as you get older that, that your, your spirit's still able to do exactly what your spirit wanted to do when you were a teenager, when you were younger? Amen. You can see yourself running like your kids run right now, but somehow the body doesn't keep up with it. But your spirit's not aging. Amen. It's not aging like the body ages. It doesn't get weaker over time. I'm telling you, we got to get the understanding, you know, yeah, we got a body, but that's not all there is. There is spirit, there is soul and body. And your spirit deals with the spirit realm, which is the part where we experience God. I really come to know God and experience God in my spirit being. It's alive. When I get born again, my spirit becomes alive to the things of God. And things that didn't mean much to me before suddenly mean a whole lot to me. And, and the word of God that didn't do much for me before suddenly feeds me when I read the pages and, and it nourishes me up and builds me up so I'm strong on the inside spiritually. Now your body is that mental, uh, or is the physical realm. Your soul is the mental or the emotional realm. But we're focusing on this spirit part. And because the spirit part is so significant, we ought to give the most attention to our spirit. Amen. If it's going to last forever, if it's where we know God, if it's where faith dwells, if it's where we walk by faith and not by sight, we ought to give more heed to our spirit than any other part. More than our body and more than, than, than our soulless realm. But sadly, that is not the case. Where do most people spend most of their time? What, what is the part that they spend most of their time on? The, the flesh, the body. And so we take care of it. We dress it up. We, 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 I talked about all that last week. We got to pluck it. We got to dye it. We got to put something on it. We got to cause it to measure up right in the eyes of society. I mean, we work, we work, we work on that body. But the truth is, we ought to be working more on our spirit being than any other part of our life. Amen. I mean, because if you do everything for your body and you let your spirit get weak, you're going to get in trouble. You know, I mean, if you have the best body you can possibly have and your spirit diminishes and is weakened and never is strong in the Lord and your faith is never developed and you never mature and grow up in the things of God, you are going to lose out on some things along this journey. So we got to learn how to give time to the spirit man just like or even more so than we're giving time to this flesh that you and I live in. Now, I'm not telling you you don't need to take care of your body. You need to take care of your body. But you need to take care of your spirit. And you need to make sure that spiritually you're receiving what you need. Now, we're talking today about nourishing the inner man, the spirit man. Just like you need to eat physically, your spirit must eat. Your spirit man must eat spiritually. The, the part of you that's alive to the Lord needs some spiritual food so that you can build up your spirit. You will live in spiritual weakness if you do not nourish 
your spirit man through feeding on what God says we are to feed on. But we have a part. How many knows God has done his part? Amen. Somebody said, well, what did he do? Well, he sent his son to die on the cross. And then what did his son did his part? Jesus, how many believe Jesus did his part? Wave at me. What did he do? He died on the cross. Paid the price with his own blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He took the nails in his hands, the nails in his feet. He took everything at the cross till the point where he said it is finished. He did his part. God did his part by sending his son. The son did his part by going to the cross. They've all done their part. But how many of you know we have a part to play in this as well? Somebody said, well, what is our part? Well, when you got saved, what was your part? First of all, you had to believe in your heart. The Bible said, you believe in your heart unto righteousness that Jesus is the Son of God and that, that uh, God raised Him from the dead. He died on the cross and God raised Him from the dead. But then the Bible also says, you've got to confess with your mouth and with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. That's in Romans. So you did have a part in this thing. Although he did the major part. You had a part and that part was to believe and to confess. Now, when it comes to nourishing up and building up our spirit, you and I have a part. I mean, God didn't just mature you overnight. I know some people think they got saved and they just got it all right then. Boom, wham, there it is. I got it all. I'm spiritually mature. How many knows it doesn't take those kind of converts very long to fall flat on their face and realize they didn't get it all? There is this thing of spiritual growth. And there is this thing of spiritual maturity. So just like your body grows, now your spirit grows, but it doesn't age. The body grows, but then begins to age. But the spirit grows as it is nourished on the things of God. How many will admit that since you got saved, you have grown? You feel like you've grown. Somebody said, well, how did I grow? Well, you grew in knowledge. You grew in understanding. You grew in the things of the Spirit. You learned how to pray. You learned how to do things through uh, fellowship in the church. You ought to be at a different level today than the day you got, gave your heart to the Lord. I mean, you should be growing in the things of God. Your faith ought to be increasing so that you're at a different level today. You ought to have more knowledge than just that, that little two-worded scripture, Jesus wept. And I want, to, I want to burst some bubbles here today. You ought to know more than just John 3.16. Amen. Amen. You ought to know more than just a few select verses that we quote so much in church that you can quote them. You ought to know more than that if you've been saved any length of time because it's part of the nourishment, nourishment process of growing in the Spirit. So we do have a part, and that is to feed ourselves. And let me just say this. If you are weak in spirit, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Amen. Amen. I may just camp there for the rest of this message and bring the, be the, the rest later. But, but what we have to understand is here is God wants us to feed ourselves. God wants us to do whatever necessary to increase our knowledge and to build up our faith and to pray and to assemble ourselves together and sometimes people have a weakness in their spirit but you can't blame others if you're weak in spirit because I got a news flash for you, food is available there is no shortage of spiritual food, at least in this nation and I'm going to speak about, I, I can't speak for everybody's church but I can speak for Grace Fellowship there is no shortage of food in this church Somebody say, well, I wish the pastor would feed me. You must be deaf. Amen. Because <laughs> I've been spreading the table in here. I've been spreading it on Sunday morning. Yeah, and I spread it on Sunday night. You know what? Sunday morning is the appetizer. It really is the appetizer. And so Sunday night, we spread the table. I've been spreading the table on Wednesday night. Amen. Hello, are you out here? Say Amen. amen. And so the, the food is available. Somebody said, well, do you have to come to church to get it? That's only one avenue. You, you, you didn't eat physically just Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. No, you've been eating every day. And so there's food available to you on Monday, Tuesday, 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every single day that will nourish up your spirit. It's found right here, right here in this book. Can I get a better amen? Amen. It's in this book, and and, and there's life in these words, and you got to eat these words. Somebody said, well, is it really like that? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of or forth from the mouth of God. What Jesus was saying is here, don't just feed on the natural bread that takes care of one part of you because you are not just flesh and blood, you are spirit being as well. And he said, if you're going to feed your spirit, you got to live on the word of God. So food is available. Turn around and tell somebody, food is available. Amen. Amen. The opportunity to get fed is here. The opportunity... Like no other generation, because you can get it on your iPhone, you can get it on your Android device, you can get it on your tablet, you can get it on your computer, you can get it on your Roku box, you can get food 24 7 like no other generation has had available to them. You can listen while you're driving in your car to work and on your way home. Food is available to nourish you up and build up your spirit, but it is your responsibility to sit down and to eat. Now, I came from a home where my mother was a great cook and a big cook. Do you all know the difference? Big cook means when she put the table out, it was big, (laughs) spread. Three or four meals in one. You all know what, anybody know what I'm talking about? And I can tell you what mother would have been highly offended if she prepared all that and, I, and, and, and we called and said, hey, oh, we're just too busy to come. But I cooked. And some mothers would have said, I don't care how busy you are. You get yourself over here and sit down at this table and eat. Amen. 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 But then let's say, I, you know, I, I just can't make it. Well, I, I, all right. The next day, mom's cooking again. And I call up and I say, that, oh, I'm just too busy. Oh, but I cooked. I, I baked chicken. I've got, I've got cornbread. I've got soup beans. I've got you name it. I've got it on the table ready for you to sit down and eat. Yeah, but I got this that has come up and I got to be over here to that. I can't come. By the third or fourth day, you drag in and you say, mom, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so weak. I can't hardly make it. Have you eaten? Did you eat anything? Well, no, I've been so busy, I didn't take time to eat. Well, I cooked. If you had been here and sat down and ate at the table I had prepared, you would have gained some strength. If you would have come the next night, you would have gained some strength. Now get yourself in there and sit down and eat at the table so you can get some strength. And some of your moms would have smacked you up the backside of the head and said you should have listened to mama to begin with. I think sometimes our spiritual daddy would like to smack us on the backside of the head and say, I've been telling you how to get strong all through my word. I have spread the table. I've got some spiritual steaks. i got some spiritual milk for the babies, but i got some spiritual meat for the men and women of God, but I can't get you to be still long enough and sit under the word long enough to hear what I'm trying to say and you wonder why you're weak in spirit. I'm telling you, this is a revelation to every one of us today we can be strong I said we can be strong but we gotta take time turn around and tell somebody take time shout take time if you don't take time you can't blame anybody but yourself you gotta take time sit down and eat what God has prepared and I'll tell you this when you eat the food that God prepared it will make you strong in spirit just like your mama's cooking will make you strong in the the physical realm are you hearing this say amen Amen. wow we don't want to have a weak spirit Let me just give you some marks of a weak spirit. Number one is appetite issues. You ever go to the doctor and one of the first things the doctor says, how's your appetite? 
Well, he's eating everything in the house. I don't think he's got a problem with his appetite. <laughs> well, that's good. Not only eat too much, but that's good. But if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, how's your appetite? You say, Doc, I can't eat anything. I'm not eating. Not eating well. The first thing the doctor's going to tell you is you've got to eat. You've got to eat to live. Is that right? You've got to eat to live. If you don't eat, eventually you will die. But one of the first marks of a weak spirit is appetite issues. And it's a warning sign when you have lost your hunger for the Word of God. When you've lost your hunger to come to the house of God. And it happens and it can happen very, very quickly. No longer hungry for prayer. No longer hungry to sit down and hear the pastor preach. No longer hungry for the fellowship of the house of God. These are warning signs to us that we have an appetite issue and we need to deal with it. Somebody said, what do you do? You may have to force feed yourself. But somehow, you got to eat. Amen. Look at somebody say, you got to eat. Gotta eat. To, uh, we're not talking about lunch. We're talking about spiritually. Amen. Amen. Another sign is murmuring and complaining. Yeah. Wow. woo <laughs> Pastor Pre is preaching the word today. When people go to murmuring and complaining, it is a sign of a weak spirit. <laughs> well is right, Pastor Patty. It is. It's a sign of a weak spirit. I can show you throughout the Word what was wrong with the children of Israel that caused them not to get their inheritance, the promised land. They complained and murmured. But what was really the root of it was a weak spirit. They were so weak in spirit, they did not have enough faith to go in and take what God said was theirs. And fear overtook them, and they lost what God said was theirs. Ne uh, negative attitudes about everything. Person weak in spirit will be negative about everything. If you get up and you say, oh, is the sun shining beautifully today? It's too bright. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful the Lord gave us rain today that we so much needed in this drought? Oh, it's, uh, my, my, you know, just wash my garden away. <laughs> Isn't it nice the Lord sent us a cool breeze? It's a little too cold. <laughs> it's a little too hot, a little too cold. A negative attitude reflects a weak spirit. Sin reflects a weak spirit. When there is sin and failures over and over in the flesh, and then ultimately you can even experience weakness in your body because your spirit's not strong. Amen. Did you ever just feel like, you know, you, you know in the flesh your body laid there and slept all night, but you got up the next morning and it just seemed like you couldn't get out of bed. Maybe it's because you rested in the natural body, but you never took time to rest the spirit or your emotional uh, senses. You rested on the outside, but you didn't rest on the inside. You need to rest on the outside, but you also need to rest on the inside. If there's a battle going on all night on the inside, even though you might be physically laying there and physically asleep, you're not really rested. And all of this is a sign or a mark of a weak spirit. And if you're experiencing these things, here's the remedy. Begin to nourish the spirit. Begin to build up the spirit. Begin to feed on things that will build up the spirit. I want to tell you, when your spirit gets strong, you'll feel stronger in the flesh. When, when your spirit begins to get strong, you'll feel like you can do things that before you said, I can't. When, when the spirit gets strong, you'll have a different outlook and a different attitude. When the spirit gets strong, your faith outlook will be better. When the spirit is strong, you can do what God says you can do. And you won't take no for an answer when the devil tells you there's no way. Are you listening to this today? Amen. I got to go one place and we got to finish this up. Joshua chapter 1. Many of you know this, but we're going to read it anyway. So why, why do we have to read so many passages you know that we already know? Well, number one, many do not know. Number two, even if you do know, you need to eat it again. It's still a good meal. Some of you are going to go order the same thing for Sunday lunch. You've been eating for Sunday lunch the last 20 years at the same restaurant. You can do the same thing with a spiritual meal. Go back and eat it again. And you know what? Sometimes it will taste better the second, third, and fourth, and fifth time around. Amen. 
And sometimes you'll get a revelation out of it you didn't get before. Praise God. Joshua chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Pause just a second. Let's set this up. First generation lost it. Died without it. Took them 40 years to all die off in the wilderness. Moses now has died. Didn't even get to go into the promised land. We won't go into that subject and, and why. But he didn't get to go either. Joshua is going to be the leader now that's going to lead the next generation in and it's time to go. Now how many knows when it's time to go, you better know how to go. Because the last generation got right there. I mean they're there. Right there at the entrance and the spies went in ten of them came out and said we can't do it two of them came out and said we can because they had a different spirit and because of the ten the spirit of fear came across the whole camp and they lost it I mean right there and lost it so when it's time to go in you better know how to go in and so now it's time to go in Joshua is going to lead them in and, and he says, arise. The Lord says, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, for the land that I'm going to give you uh, and to the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites and into the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Isn't that a good verse? Look at that again right there. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Folks, when you're getting ready to go in and receive, that's a good one. Will you agree? But then notice verse 6. Be strong. Everybody shout, be strong. Notice it. Be strong. It's just that simple. Be strong. And of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Look at verse 7. Only be thou strong. Everybody say, only be thou strong. Now notice again, he said, I mean, he said it in verse 6, wouldn't that be enough? Apparently not. So in verse 7, he comes back and he says, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest. Observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. Do you see that? That thou mayest prosper. I lost my place. Whithersoever thou goest. Look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate. Everybody shout meditate. Meditate. Now let's make sure we don't forget that word. Shout it two more times. Meditate. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How often? Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all is written therein. For then. Everybody shout for then. For then. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Here we go again. Verse 9. Look what he said I commanded thee. He reminds them. What did he command them? Be strong. Everybody shout be strong. Be strong. And of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Whithersoever thou goest. Now. Let's go with that from the end to the beginning. Very quickly. The key that. We're trying to achieve in verse 8 with these people is so that what they're getting ready to do will be prosperous and what they're getting ready to undertake they will have good success. 
prosperous and good success. Prosperous has a little different meaning than if we, we think of prosperous in the Western culture of just money. You know, well, what, what does it mean to be prosperous? It means you got money. Well, it can be, it can be <laughs> attached to that. But, but the word prosperous used here really means to advance. To be able to move forward. Did you ever feel like you were stuck? And how many knows when you're stuck, you're not advancing? When you're stuck, or as I say sometimes, stalled out. Some of us in southeastern Kentucky know what it was like to have a vehicle that stalls. To stall out means we're not advancing forward or we're not moving forward or we're not progressing. And so what he's telling them here is, I'm going to cause your way to be prosperous. See, the first generation lost the advancement and the moving forward. Their way lost its ability to be prosperous because they wouldn't believe God. God said, I don't want you to be like that generation. I want you to advance. I want you to move forward. I want you to embrace what I've said is yours. I want you to have it, and I want you to have it all. I want you to have the grapes they saw. I want you to have the houses you didn't build. I want you to dwell in the land. I want you to eat the honey and drink the milk of it. I want you to have every bit of it. But to do so, your way's got to be prosperous. you got to be able to advance because if you stop right here, you're not going to be prosperous to have what I've said is yours. Amen. And then success. And it just simply is another way of saying the Lord wants us to succeed. How many believes the Lord wants you to succeed? In what you put your hands to. He does want us to succeed. But then notice here. He said you're going to have a prosperous journey. And good success. If you do something. Everybody shout if. Because yeah. we found two words there. In, uh, in, in this passage. Where it says in verse 8. For then thou shalt have a prosperous journey. And then you shall have good success. So what was it that brought us to the for then so we could have prosperity to get in? A prosperous journey to go forward and advance into what God said is ours. He gives us the key. He says it over and over to be strong, be strong, be strong. If you're going to be strong, you can be uh, successful in this. If you'll be strong and not get into fear, you'll, you'll be prosperous, you'll advance. If you can be strong and be not dismayed, you'll be able to advance and to take what I have said is yours but you got to be strong. But he also gave them the key to being strong. And the key is in verse 8. He said, This law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You shall meditate. Everybody shout meditate. Yes. Day and night. Everybody shout day and night. Yes. And then you'll be able to observe all that is written therein. And for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. Somebody said, How important is it that we meditate, meditate in the Word of God? Extremely. Life and death, success, no success, prosperous, not prosperous. It all is contingent upon you meditating in what the Lord said day and night. You believe that, say amen. amen. A strong spirit comes for more than one service a week. A strong service comes for more than you just reading one verse of scripture on Monday morning and never opening your Bible again until the next Sunday. A strong spirit comes from more than just an occasional prayer. A strong spirit comes from a committed process of keeping God alive in your mind and more than your mind, alive in your spirit day and night, seven days a week, 12 months out of the year, and 365 days a year, all of this, it takes that kind of commitment to keep your spirit strong, thinking about God, meditating on God, and keeping His Word and His promises alive in your heart. What are you doing? You're nourishing your spirit. You're getting nourishment. You're getting strength. So you become stronger and stronger and stronger. If you get this, shout amen. Amen. So we be, if we're strong, we receive. If we get weak, we, we'll eventually lose out. But there's no magic formula. 
Somebody said, what's the magic amount of verses? There is, you can't put it into that. Somebody said, is there any way, Pastor, you just lay hands on me, slap me with oil, and drench me good, and I'll be strong for seven days, and I'll come back next Sunday and let you slap me in the head again, and I'll be strong. I wish it was that simple. I'd slap every one of you. I'd just set me a table out in the parking lot, and I'd call for everybody watching for TV, and I'd pour the oil on you and slap one side of your face and the other in Jesus' name. But it would not make you one ounce stronger. The Bible never said you shall lay hands on the weak and they shall become strong. you got to feed and do what this, verse, this passage says. Let me get this out, and, and we'll close. See, this was not, let me go back up here, because this is where we need to get this, then we'll, we'll be finished. This was not just something the Lord came up with. This was God's prescribed method for their success if they were going to make it in the promised land. And what he was saying is, the only way you're going to be strong, and you're going to have to be strong to get there, the only way you're going to be strong, you've got to be strong to get there, is if you stay in my covenant, talk my word, talk it, meditate it on it, think on it, but don't just think on it. Get it on your lips so your lips are moving and talk about it and meditate on it and don't just do it a little bit here and there. Do it in the morning time when you get up. Do it around all day long when you think about it and then at night time before you go to sleep by all means meditate in the word of God then and only then your way will be prosperous and successful what he was telling them is how they can get the promised land that the first generation lost Amen. because God doesn't just pour it all out now this is what you need to get we'll, we'll finish this up notice here That God had promised them all these things, but it just didn't happen without their participation. That's right. And spiritual growth requires our participation. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord knows if He wants to grow me and to pour it into me, it doesn't work that way. You have to do a part of it and take a little time. And, and fill up on the things of God. Now, I would love to go into a part of this sermon today, I don't have time, where the simple fact is we have filled up on everything except what builds up our spirit. Because we have time. And we put that time in all kinds of places. And we have filled up, like, here's, here's, here's kind of the thing. If your kid fills up on junk food, how many knows what will happen at dinner time? They want to eat. And so much of the church is we filled ourselves up on this and that and that and this and everything else that there's nothing left inside to desire anything spiritual. And we got to correct this. So we will have the time to receive from the Lord. Now, I close. I'm going to close with this. I had some other stuff. We'll pick it up later. But, but here's the thing. I realize I'm a pastor. And you realize that pastors got to fill up. <laughs> Do you all realize that? I mean, I, years ago, I started seeing these guys go to the bookstore and buy their sermons. Sermon books. And I never had bought, I just never bought them. Now, I have bought and used, I, I use all kinds of resources. I, I read other people's sermons and all. But I do not make it a practice to go buy my sermon for the Sunday service. It sure be easier sometimes. It would sure be a whole lot easier. Just get the book. They've got a book out that's got sermons for 52 Sundays out of the year. I don't have to prepare nothing. Just turn in there, memorize the outline, and go with it. You know, that's just not me. It's not what God called me to do, all right? And so I have to spend time feeding, and you expect that. Now, now here's the thing. I know I have an advantage because I work at the church. I have my office. I sit in there the, my morning hours. The majority of those is spent feeding my spirit. And I'm so thankful that my job allows me to eat and feed my spirit. Because you know what? 
what I'm getting in that feeding time is more for me than it is maybe for you because if I don't get it, I can't give it to you. Amen. And so now putting it in your perspective, because you've got to be up 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning. You've got to be at work, school, 7 o'clock in the morning. We don't have the joy of sitting behind the pastor's desk and feeding ourselves all day. Who does this pastor think he is to tell us we need to feed ourselves? When does he think we're going to feed ourselves? When does he think we're going to eat all this word? When does he think we're going to read? When does he think we're going to meditate? All I can tell you is this. you got to figure out how to do it. And it doesn't take sometimes a lot. It just takes a little to make a huge difference. And so when I was working 40 hours plus on a job, a lot of times what I did, one job, I've told the story, I kept a Bible promise book at my fingertips at all times. And throughout the day, I would grab it, open it, read, and then I'd get up and I'd go to the copy machine or I'd go to the fax machine or I would take a walk around the offices meditating on what those promises said, doing what I had to do. Turn around and tell somebody, you got to do what you got to do. When I worked for Missile's Office Supply in Corbin, I kept a Bible promise passage in my pocket all day. Didn't have a book, had a, had a card with a scripture on it all day long, walking around when there were no customers. Pull that out occasionally, just when I'd reach in my pocket for something. There's that card. Pull it out, look at it, read it, memorize it, keep it on my memory, put it back in there. What am I doing? I'm keeping the word alive in my spirit. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Now, you got an iPhone, like I said, you got apps of all kinds, you got technology that, that you got to figure out how to use it for the glory of God and feed yourself. And if, if I could have given this title, I should have gave this title, this nice catchy title here today, Feed Yourself. Turn around and tell somebody, say, Feed Yourself. <laughs> Amen. Look at them again and say, Did you eat today? If they said no, look around and tell them anyway. Tell them anyway. It's not, it said it's nobody's fault but yours. <laughs> nobody's fault but yours. If you're going hungry, nobody's fault but yours. Pull up to the table. Feed yourself. Look at them again and tell them. Say, Pastor said. Pastor. Feed yourself. <laughs> see, see, you can't blame the, the trainer at the gym because your body's got flabby and you didn't show up to do what the trainer said. <laughs> you can't blame the grocery store, the owner of... I won't name the grocery stores for copyright's sake. But you can't go blame the grocery stores because... You went in there and all you did was load your cart up with junk food and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you got the worst kind of sickness ever. What have you been eating? And you tell him all that junk and you want to go strangle the grocery store owner. It's not his fault. <laughs> and if you're not eating spiritually, it's not the preacher's fault. You got the Bible? Have you got a Bible? Amen. Not get you one. Most of us got more than one. Get it open. Start working on it. Figure out a process. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. And start feeding. Start feeding. And, and I promise you, I promise you, I firmly promise you, your spiritual being will grow. And we'll start getting stronger. How many testify that I'm telling the truth? Amen. Help me convince some. Amen. You'll start getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Amen. Amen. And eventually, you'll have a spirit that will sustain you when an infirmity shows up. Somebody said, what kind of infirmity? It doesn't matter. My spirit full of God can take care of any infirmity. Whatever it is. If it's full of the God, the God that I know. And so you'll have the spirit we talked about that will sustain you in infirmity. Work on your spirit and quit focusing so much on the infirmity. Did you receive? 
Amen. Bow your heads right where you are. Father, thank you for your word that encourages us, that builds us up, that is nourishment to our spirit, that brings life. And Lord, you said it not only impacts our physical or our spiritual being, but Lord, you even said that the word of God is health and life to our natural body. Father, I pray that this word would be sealed in the hearts of men and women. And this week, Lord, you would help us to rise up with a new commitment to begin to feed our spirits like we've never fed them before so we will become stronger than we've ever been before. I ask you to do it in Jesus' name. Heads bowed.